Hi, I'm Seamless, <clears throat> and today this is a tech tip for Sonic Academy using FL Studio, also using Citrus and Badger, using a whole bunch of stuff. Today I'm going to talk to you about two of my favorite FM tricks. Uh, the first one is to get a kind of a robot-y, talky FM sound, and the other one is all about the idea of what squelch is. These two things are very integral to creating a very basic FM sound that is, is, a, is a, a, a base uh, for a lot, of the, a lot of the sounds that I like to make. So I, I begin making this sort of thing, and then I can, you can expand upon it because it's very easy to sort of build on it. So right now I've got just a sine wave, not doing much of anything. I'm going to FM it by a triangle. Now the reason why I'm doing it by a triangle is because of a particular kind of behavior that you get when you FM something by a triangle versus a sine wave, at least in the digital realm. Because as it turns out, in the digital realm, shapes mean different things. For example, if I FM a tone by a sine wave, you get sort of the behavior you'd expect a sine wave to have. But if I do it with a triangle wave, you get a behavior that is reminiscent of what a square wave should be doing. Not to mention if a saw wave and even a square wave have very different behavior than, again, what you would expect. This is because FM does not actually modulate pitch directly. It modulates phase. And moving phase is a lot like having your own personal little, little Doppler effect in the waveform. Because if you change the, wave, uh, the, p the starting position of a waveform, otherwise known as the phase, which is to say the starting position of a waveform, just to visualize that for you, um, while it's playing, it'll change the, the, the output size of the waveform, otherwise known as the pitch. So that's why we were able to do that. It has something to do with the programming nature in, digital, in the digital world where for some reason we can't modulate pitch that fast. I don't really know. I never did. Anyway, point being, um, we get that behavior of a triangle wave. What this means for us when we would do it at, at audio rate, which is to say that the same rate as our output oscillator, the, um, the side wave modulation, we'll still do what we want to do it with if, if we were to add a higher harmonic in here to get, to get that that kind of talky thing, but it sounds kind of muddy. And this is because of the behavior of the sine wave, which is, say, which is to say that the pitch is moving back and forth between two top pitches, but it's moving all the way through them, versus if we were to make a triangle wave, where it's really only existing at the top pitch and then the bottom pitch. It makes it much cleaner. So that's why we're using triangle waves. And as you saw, once I add a higher harmonic in, th this, this, this works. This happened. We have this talky thing now. Why does that happen? Well, if you look at just a regular basic uh, modulation here, I'm actually going to go over here and uh, link it to mod X so that we can... Yeah. We get this movement when we have just a regular base level sine wave, but if I add a higher harmonic, actually, if I do, if I do just the high harmonic, we see that it kind of just, just sits up there which uh, doesn't do much. But if that higher harmonic, because we add in the lower harmonic, it's as if that higher harmonic is actually getting FM with the lower harmonic. You can see that it starts in the same position, but then it expands. And that expansion, combined with the movement of the lower frequencies, creates the spectral movement that we associate with the formant type. And thus we get the talky kind of formant bass. How cool is that? So, neat stuff. Now, doing this with uh, Citrus means that, you know, we have, we have, we were using the higher harmonic inside the oscillator window. We get a whole bunch of harmonics and get very, very interesting sounds. But if you want to do this with any other FM synth, what we'd have to do is we'd actually have to use an entirely separate oscillator and set it to the same higher harmonic. The benefit of doing this, though, actually has to do with the next thing, the idea of the squelchy business in the FM. So now we have this extra harmonic by itself. If I were to play it by itself, we can have that business. But now watch what happens when I modulate that harmonic by a, a bass level tone. It gets squelchier. It starts to spread. And this is because, as, as we now know, we're modulating that frequency at the speed of the of the bass tone, so now it sounds like it's at the bass tone, like what we did when we had the higher harmonic involved in the triangle wave. But because we now have it separate, we're able to control that independently. <laughs> and 
and now we have a squelchier tone. And this is true for anything that really has squelch in it, including uh, using something like Massive to use the bend plus and minus mode, which, which actually physically changes the shape of the waveform. If you were to look at the shape of that waveform while you engage the modulation oscillator at uh, the bass level tone, you'll actually see it have the same kind of motion associated with it that you do with bend, bend plus and minus. This is because while the bend plus and minus is a specific wavetable kind of function, it uh, can be mimicked by FM. And inside inside an FM plugin, you can add squelch by having a higher harmonic being modulated by a lower lower uh, toned oscillator. But you can also do this um, with anything that has any kind of FM involved with it, or even FM in post if you use FM as effect to route audio in, which can then be FM'd by the oscillators inside it, which is pretty cool. So, recap. Uh, you have you modulate sine wave by a triangle wave plus a higher harmonic to get talky FM. <laughs> and then you can modulate higher harmonic by a bass level tone to get squelch. <laughs> I personally enjoy uh, lining this up with um, the Y mod. So that means that the Y is controlling the squelch and X is controlling main FM. <laughs> Automating both can be sometimes can be kind of fun. You have a lot of control over the over the tone that you generate using these tricks. I hope this has been valuable. Um, like I said, this is the basis for a lot of sounds that I begin with. This, this is a great vocoder carrier. You can just distort it and have just a wonderful main bass. Change some of the harmonics. Change which higher harmonic you're using. Change what kind of shape you're using. And you can alter the tone quite heavily to make something very unique. This is pretty much the bare bones, most minimal version of this that I accept. I don't really like using the sine waves because of what we discussed earlier about it being muddy. So triangle wave, FM, higher harmonic, and then uh, lower harmonic, secondary FM on the oscillator, the higher oscillator. Good stuff. If you have any questions about this, let me know. And as usual, have a nice day. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.